This meeting is being recorded. Hey guys, it's Dave Carberry again from Needworking. It's good to see everyone. This is episode number two of the Hot Potato Sessions. And you ask, what is a hot potato session? Well, the hot potato is something that when you don't know the answer, you send it to someone else. And that's exactly what we're doing here. So with the hot potato sessions, we're going in and we're going to find expert views and analysis of different things that I know nothing about. And today we're going to talk crowdfunding, which is an exciting topic because needworking's in that situation. And we want to figure out how do we do that? So we're here today with Rick Leinbach. Rick, how are you doing today? Uh, David, I'm doing great. Thank you very much. And I, I actually like coming in number two because my, my past has been as a CFO and essentially the CEO and then the CFO is number two. So I fit right into the, the hot potato. Cool. Perfect. Um, so, so tell me about, so let's talk about uh, your companies, your business, who you are, what you do. Um, Startup Portal, I'm familiar with, uh, you know, came up for a session up in Westminster, Maryland. It's pretty exciting to see everybody that you brought out for 1 million cups, which I want to learn more about later. But um, talk to me about your business and what you do. Oh, sure. So, so I have been behind the desk for 25, 30 years. And the last 10, I've been doing outsourced CFO consulting. And along the way, equity crowdfunding, which was started from the Jobs Act, um, was formed. And, and my background is working with private and publicly traded company. And so if you're looking to do equity crowdfunding, there's a, there's a, you're not public, but there's a little piece of reporting. So along the way, I formed Startup Portal based on the fact that it really is, is sort of a derivative of CFO consulting, but fits to smaller evolving businesses that need to raise money and maybe are outside the norms of going to the bank or not quite ready for private equity. Along the way, we can, we can touch all those, but essentially it's um, it, it startup world that, that little derivative that says, hey, you need somebody to be your CFO to side. And our location is built to help you present, pitch, and put your financials together and, and, and tell your story. So at what point does a company do that? So you have an idea and you find, let's say, a co-founder and you come together and you create the idea. Um, is it when you're building something, when you're like in the MVP stage, or is it when you're ready to, to really kind of explode and, and you've seen that there's a, you know, a process and, and people are using or interested in your product? Well, 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 the beauty is you're not reinventing the wheel with this process. Um, so, so really, you, ha you can look at other people and what others have done. We have a little bit of that we'll show you later, but, but essentially, you, you lay out your roadmap. So there's, it's unlikely that you're going to come up with an idea, and then just a few days later, somebody's going to write you a check and say, hey, give it a shot. I actually have seen that done, but many, many moons ago. But, but the reality is, you, you know, for us, we want you to put your idea on paper, and then we can help you put it to numbers. And with the numbers, you're going to put your, your financial plan in place, aligning with your business plan. So a lot of times it comes down to having that solid business plan that can tell your story. I, I will say, if you come to me and say, Rick, I need you to do a business plan, I'm going to push back a little bit and say, you're the one that has to own and do your business plan. We help you with the framework. We can help you with the financials and we teach you the metrics to own that business plan when you come in and say, hey, I think I can do in year one X, X units, but by year five, I'm gonna be crushing it. And these are my numbers, these are the staff I need. And, I, and you throw in the metrics like revenue by employee, and you really can show someone the pattern and tell that story along with your own research and, and really giving them the confidence that they'll invest in you, whether it's an investor or merely going to the bank. You know, it goes, it works you know, all the way around. Okay. That's good to know. So the um, the side of crowdfunding. So explain that to me. I see, you know, Mr. Wonderful on television. He's uh, talking about yeah. Start Engine and come to yeah. me and we'll, we'll do whatever we can. So, you know, I know I've yeah. seen GoFundMe campaigns, Indiegogo. Right. There's so many yeah. different types of scenarios right. and solutions and it, softwares. Yeah. Like where do you yeah, go? I look at, where, where do you start? Right. Well, I look at, at crowdfunding as a little bit of Baskin Robbins. There's lots of flavors. And really the purpose of today's um, you know, interview is to really talk about making sure that flavor of ice cream fits your business model. So there's an ability to raise 
capital, and, and you have to go through equity crowdfunding portals, hence the name Startup Portal. Um, but you have to go through portals that are regulated by FINRA, and FINRA regulates stockbrokers. So you have to go through a compliance-based portal to tell people your story and pitch your business and have them invest in you. And they have a whole compliance process you have to go through and a pitch process and you put a video together. Um, and then, you, but, but before all of that, you, know, you wanna find that portal that fits your business. It, if you're looking to basically go out and, and you know, have a software company that goes crazy and scalable, you know, maybe like you, um, there are portals oh, like hope. Start Engine. You know, the, there are portals like WeFunder, um, the, the big ones out there. And then there's also some niche portals that, that help people really um, match their business model. Good example, if you said, Rick, I want to get financing for my brewery, I'd send you to Mainvest as the, 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 main, the main one to look at. Others do it, but Mainvest has a pretty good model. And what happens is in their portal, they actually have investors that have interest in breweries. So when you go to pitch your business, you're pitching to investors that are going to put a little fraction of an investment into you, but they want to see breweries succeed. So it is a process, an evaluation process. I would caution you, and I have had someone say to me, hey, I Googled it and I tried all these. The problem with the Google is you're going to get whoever pays the highest dollar for the ad doesn't mean it, it fits your business model. And that's really where we, we believe we can help folks. Yeah, it's, it's interesting that you say that. It's like you, you see all these advertised attorneys out there on billboards. Um, right. And sometimes they're not the best attorney for you. So, uh, you know, with, with that being said, I had no idea that there was actually portals like that that were individualized to different types of businesses, which is pretty cool. So what kind of businesses do you recommend, like really go out for funding and the crowdfunding side of it? So you said brewery, which I think is amazing. That's actually a really great way to yeah, for us, I want to say we're a little bit like Switzerland, right? We're not affiliated with any direct portal. We really want to guide you and, and see what others have done. There's probably five to 6,000 equity crowdfunding deals that have been done since 2015. And, and we're looking at how we help you understand what the market looks like. So if you give me a moment, I can pull up our dashboard to kind of give you a, a sense of, of what we have out there. And, yeah. and how we're tracking the data. So cool. you hold on one second. I always screen. love graphs and data and charts and analysis. Um, so yeah, so that being said, uh, you know, the, the technology, I guess there's so much information that is available to people. And I've heard of different products like um, PitchBook and things to that nature where um, you you know you can go in and find investors so is that similar to what your portal is or what you're on mute right now too just by the way and i can't see your screen share um because i've seen i've seen pitch book and i've seen uh founder suite as a matter of fact i was at south by southwest and i met the ceo from founder suite really cool product and they uh they started growing that thing too so i've been trying to just dissect and learn the landscape for quite some time and it's pretty complex it's pretty confusing so it's it's good to have you on and actually talk through it you're still muted sorry um <laughs> so this is and i'm what i'm looking at here too for the analytics side of it it looks like uh industry product service so you can do a search on products and you can do a can you hear me now i can hear you now yeah okay so i think you got a sense on the screen but i think it mutes when it switches over to that it okay. mutes me so I, unless you want to walk everybody through it but you know the you know, essentially the um the dashboard there walks you through and, and helps you identify breweries wineries software companies AI companies, green companies. So it, it's just, it's vast on the different types of, of um, capital that has been raised out there. Um, gotcha. so it, so, it, it, 
So I was going to say for like for social media side of it or anything that we're doing, like we're, you know, and we're, we're in a funny space because I, I don't like to consider us like a social media platform, even though we do connect people on social media. I look right. at us as more as like a networking group, like the top end of how we're helping networking groups connect with one another. Sure. So, so it'd be interesting to see and look at that data to see, okay, what other types of software platforms have done it. I know, uh, you know, there's a great networking group out there, Chief, where women are joining, and um, I've seen that explode and grow. So, like, would you be able to see the funding for a company like that in an organization like that? Yeah, the key with, with any of that and crowdfunding, and you can hear me now, correct? Yep. Okay, the key with, with any of that in crowdfunding is you have the crowd, right? And, and it's kind of like the social media reels that are out there now. You can put a reel out. 20 reels out today. And if one of those catches, it's really the crowd is going to, you know, come behind it and everybody's going to watch that same, same um, reel. So, so, so really crowdfunding is about getting the crowd excited about what you're doing and where you're going with it and, and showing scalability, you know, as, as far as social media or IT or software companies, you know, similar nature. If you're a brewery, you, you want to get the crowd as a, a vested interest and be either an owner, a fractional owner of the brewery in your community. And guess what? They're going to feel like an owner. And when they make choices, hopefully they come to you before they go to someone else and become a regular in that, in that respect. So, so crowdfunding is really about the crowd and, and engaging you know, those, those folks that want to know your story. So that's where if we can provide you comparisons of what worked and what hasn't worked, it may save you the heartbeat you know, the, the heartache, sorry, the heartache of going out there, putting all this together, and then boom, it's not working. There, That's interesting. There is, yeah. There is yeah, one element out there. There's one thing out there called test the waters. And, and we'll probably get into that at Startup Portal a little bit in the future, just to help people identify. We're not a crowdfunding portal, but there's a way to, to get people where they can really sign up and say, hey, you know what? If they were ever to raise capital, I would be interested in that. So they're, they're making changes to the overall equity crowdfunding process to make it more advantage for people to raise capital and not have to spend the fees and cost involved. So right now, um, take you mentioned the brewery side. I mean, that's kind of exciting. As a marketing person, I think uh, how fun it would be just to like, Hold a hold a beer, you know, record somebody on a video, and then and like the excitement of that piece of it, like the technology plays that are out there. Though there's some yeah. things that you just can't even explain to people, and right. like like how do they get excited? On, and right. and and actually, and that comes to the other question too. Like, what are the big things that are getting funded? And, and right now, is it bio? Is it health? Is it green? Like, what what? Where are people going with crowdfunding? Yeah. Realistically, I would say it's it's all of the all of the above, right? And the the key there, I'll give you a great example today. Um, have you heard of Substack, right? Yes. The, yeah. The portal. Yeah. So Substack is a, is basically a paid blog. You can get paid to write your blog. Um, Substack is out there, and they've raised capital through private equity, Series A, B rounds, and, and recently they went to crowdfunding. And the most recent I saw, they were up to $6 million that they've raised through the crowd. Mm -hmm. um, so which tells me that their overall plan, because they're, you know, they're, they're raising capital, pretty high valuation, but they're raising capital to get the individual investors, tells me that they have a, a game plan to actually probably do an IPO or go public. Um, and what happens when you do an IPO or go public is you need retail investors. You need people to get behind you. You need the crowd. So yeah. equity crowdfunding can be that small little component that leads you to the next step. So with that being said, so, you know, you might go to friends and family or you might go to people that you know directly for that crowd side of it, for the excitement, right. instead of trying to go yeah. find a specific angel investor or like a, a bigger investor that might be, I mean, we're not at that point. We're actually going after like being capital. <laughs> so we want we want to go yeah. find something that's a little more reasonable. Well, well, part of this is your business model. And I always stick to that because if you wanted to go to venture capital, right, and find someone that fits you, you know, typically you, you may be introduced to someone. If you go to their websites, they usually lay out 
here's the type of companies we invest in. Here's our por portfolio of investments. And, and you can really do your own betting to say, do I fit? Right. For, for in, in, in equity crowdfunding in, in similar vein is that you can find, does it fit from a business standpoint and, and a model standpoint to go out and have all these investors uh, that want to be part of the company? Quite frankly, mm -hmm. in your case, it could be a good fit because you have a you have a user base and you have a community and the community, everybody has needs and working together and, and, and really it could be a, a, a you know, good starting point. So in, in that regard, um, the having that base and understanding your base um, could put you in a position to say, hey, equity crowdfunding fits. If you are very, very highly technical and you need 50K today to, to really get your demo done or your product, your model, let's say, um, and your product validated, whatever it is, but you know that high tech, that, that technology is going to need 10 million down the road, I would not go equity crowdfunding. I'd find the friends and family, the private placement, get that done, you know, test your product, and then find the private, the, the private equity that can really support you down the road. Um, equity crowdfunding can raise up to 5 million in one year, which used to be a million. They bumped it up, um, which is great for some companies. But if you really need significant capital down the road, you want to start out right and, and really get introduced and prepare yourself for, for potential private equity. So, so getting into that, like valuation. So let's say you are interested in doing it, but you have started this company. You have no idea how much you're worth at this point. How do you even right. set a price? How do you, how do you look at what a valuation is and what right. you do? Well, I, I will say my personal opinion is that some of the valuations today out there with crowdfunding deals are a bit higher. You know, it's a, it's a little, you know, some of them will have sticker shock for, from an investor standpoint where I say, you know what, if I put, and, and I don't, I, I, if I didn't mention it, you know, you can invest some companies a hundred dollars in these companies. The mm -hmm. average I see is anywhere from 750 to a thousand per investor when you do the math. Um, you know, so, so, you know, from a valuation standpoint, if I'm putting $500 into a company and it's worth a billion dollars, it's hard to me, for me to see that the valuation is going to be up there and, and it's going to double, triple in, in you know, a year or two. So what I want to look for are companies that have reasonable valuations and explain to you that, hey, we've done a valuation based on kind of our future business plan. And there's some valuation models out there. Typically right now, a for, formal valuation from a specialist in most cases is not done. It's almost back the napkin. Hey, what's it seem like? Um, I, I think today it's a little bit like 2000 with the dot bomb. However, there's some private equity that is, is coming towards investing in the crowd as well. And when that gets in, and maybe it's not private equity as much as investors, high, you know, more sophisticated investors, when they start coming to companies and saying, hey, you can have the crowd, but you can also have an additional 100K, but this is what your valuation needs to be. I think that's where the industry is going to mature a little bit and we'll get more, I guess, balanced, fair valuations. We all want to be in yeah. when yeah. it's low and for it to crush high. But today it's, it's, it's not the case. Yeah, that makes sense. So we have a question. Uh, one of the questions is, is there, is there a minimum of equity that you can ask for? And then is there a specific area of the business too that you could actually fund, I'm imagining? Yeah, so, so from a minimum standpoint, literally what happens is you set a threshold of an opening number. A lot of companies, so they don't have to, to sweat getting to that number, a lot of companies put $10,000. That's probably the lowest I've seen. So I would say, if you're gonna say a minimum, it's probably 10K. Some people do it 50K, 100K, which I appreciate because if their business plan calls for them to raise 100K before they can get the plane off the ground, why raise 50K? Right. So I, so I certainly appreciate that. But in most cases, they set a low threshold and then you have the max of, you know, if you have an audit up to five million, a reviewed financial statement, not to get into geeky accounting stuff, but that gets to about one point two million. And then, quite frankly, under one hundred and seven thousand, I believe you need your own financial statements. So you can actually you know, basically put the numbers together and, and get it out there and, and really raise that test capital if you need it for, for smaller amounts. Um, as far as an area, if you're talking about like a portion of your company, it, it really, it's interesting that, you know, there's different dynamics to it. I would only say that you probably can't invest if you're doing equity, it's got to be in the company itself. 
or a separate company. But there are ways you can do things like equity crowdfunding with revenue share, where you say, hey, you know what, we're going to we're basically going to you know, basically pay you back, say, 8 percent on the revenue we generated from this piece of the business. I have not seen that directly, but I imagine you could you could um, mold it to that regard. And obviously, you'd have to have good accounting aspects to it to make sure you just you know, segregate the revenue from that from that business. So there's mm-hmm. different varieties that you can do. And there's, there's also debt. We haven't really talked about debt financing, but if you needed a fifty thousand p- dollar piece of equipment. You go to the bank and they're like, look, you just don't fit. You're not ready for us. And and I appreciate that too, because they have lower interest rates. Um, The alternative may be going to these high end 40% interest rate guys. And and it's horrible. In the middle is some crowdfunding programs and portals that fit that. It's a little bit higher, but it gets you that equipment and it puts you in a position, hopefully that you're bankable down the road. Well, yeah. And then speaking of the bank side of it and alternative pieces. So, you know, one of the things that I've seen out there, like in the state of Maryland, Virginia, other states, they've got programs that you can go and either, I don't know if it's a grant necessarily, or in some cases, the states actually are getting money to invest in companies. And now when they do that, are they looking for a return on investment or percent? When do they, they get bought out? Like what are, what are the, and especially for crowdfunding side of it too, when does somebody look to get buy out, bought out of that, that actual agreement? Sure. Well, for, for the States, and I'll speak to Maryland a little bit, like technology of Tedco, and they, they basically support uh, thriving entities, you know, and they basically help fund it. And typically the fund is actually in, in a, let's say a convertible note that would convert to equity when you raise the next level of capital. Um, so it's pretty specific in, in technology based. I would not, you know, bake into your plan, like formal grants. It's a little tougher for, for commercial businesses. I usually look towards nonprofits um, from, from a grant aspect. Um, so, so, you know, and, and as far as getting the, the, the buyout aspect, quite frankly, um, it, it's no different than raising private equity, private funding. You know, what, what is the exit strategy for, for the company? Some may have them, some may not. Um, good example is if you can build enough base, you know, similar to what I mentioned with Substack, is you actually can go to a public company IPO. And guess what? Once, they're tra- I, once they go to the IPO, you have free trading shares and you can get out of it. Obviously, they want you to stick around and help them grow to the future. Um, there could be occasions where private equity comes in, and I've seen that with the, the company called Boxable. If, if We'll say it now. They do a lot of advertising, so we say it now. You'll see it on their, their um, on your feeds. But Boxable went to their equity crowdfunding investors and said, hey, you know what? Here's a 15% return and bought them out. Now, I believe that's the case, but um, the tough part for that is I invested early in Boxable. I want to stick with it, see the high valuations. So, so sometimes you know, the old life's not fair aspect comes into play, but there are vehicles to, to, to exit out. Obviously, the debt is paid back right away. And one of my favorites, similar to the breweries, is rev share, where with the revenue share, you, you get paid back as they generate revenue. So you also you know, see your return coming back, you know, as well as typically, let's say it's a, you put in a dollar, they'll pay you back, or put in $100 and pay back 140 I saw one the other day that paid back $200. So what I like about that is if you do the math and you had the right business and they're kicking out the revenue right away, your return comes back sooner and it could be a pretty nice return. So that's where, well, you know. Yeah. And the, yeah, and the, the cool part about that too, like even on the brewery side of it, is that you're telling your friends and you're like, hey, you know, come on over here and yeah. buy beer with me. And you're taking them to that location and doing it. So yeah, that's where they're actually engaging and pushing and, yeah. and helping spur the crowd even more to make it even a bigger right. crowd. So Absolutely. that's, yeah. 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 And, and even with the rev share of the debt, guess what? After the period of time and you paid it back, you're a free bird. So you don't have to worry about investors for, for forever. Awesome, great. Well, we're coming up on our time, but uh, is there anything else that uh, you could add that you think like, would make sense that we didn't cover today? Well, I think in, in let's step back in general, when you're looking to go out and, and find funding is it goes back to the, where we start with the plan, right? And just making sure you have a solid business plan 
to have the market data you know, it, that allows you to say, hey, this is the market. But, but it, in, a, in some plans, when you look at them and say, oh, the market is $10 billion. Well, what I want you to do is really drill down to what's the market in your space. So you can tell that story that someone says, oh, okay, I understand. You, you know, you're not gonna have you know, 0.000% of $5 billion. You're gonna be X percent of the market in year one, but by year five, you wanna own it. So you wanna get people excited with your story. So I always say, if, you know, from, from startup portal perspective, if you can put it to paper, we can put it to numbers. Okay, great. And then how do people get in touch with you at startup portal? Oh, it's, it's Rick at startup portal. And, and yep. obviously without, you know, shameless plug here, but love for you to follow along. You know, we will be highlighting companies. And, and even if you're in the Baltimore area in May, we're, we have an event on May 23rd where we're bringing together companies that have potential to raise capital to, uh, with you know, some good speakers talking about product development and pitching and, and really you know, bring a crowd together to say, hey, you know what, if I were gonna go down that path down the road, let me talk to people that are in the midst of it. So, so follow us at Startup Portal and, and obviously feel free to reach out with any questions. Cool, and then uh, you know, one of the things that we like to do at Needworking too is give offers and discounts. So if you ever think of a, an offer or a discount to provide back to our users, just let us know. Sure. Well, yeah. So, so to me, here's what I'll offer out there is that, you know, if you have a certain business that you're in, you know, and you saw a little bit of our dashboard, I didn't get into it, but what we can do, at least send you a company, we can send you a PDF of companies raising capital and you can look in there and click on the actual raise. And you can also click into the reporting element at the SEC and really help spur your mind on other people's business plans but also what capital is being raised in your industry. If you want to do that brewery out there, I've got a ton of those to show you. So be glad to, to take the time at no cost to, to, to send that info to you. Awesome. Well, thank you. I really appreciate this. This is a lot of information to take and you know, at least we're recording this so I could come back and watch it again. <laughs> so yeah. um, and we'll, we'll chat with you soon. And yeah, like, uh, we'll, you know, like I said, post anything that you want up on Needworking. We are a platform that provides insights from experts like Rick. So just jo join us again. This is the Hot Potato Sessions number two. So we're excited to have a couple more on our way. So thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks, David.